Well, it's a great pleasure for me to be in this capacity building training session. And I'd like to thank Kasha Singh, who's been a close colleague of mine for many years for arranging the session. And would, I would much rather be there in person with you where an interactive setting would be great. But I'm going to teach you a little bit about what I think you need to know to effectively communicate your research objectives in grant applications. Um, these are my disclosures. And so I'm going to try and answer um, basically four different um, questions. What, first of all, what makes a good grant? Just the basics. Um, I'm going to tell you about what I think the importance of style and substance is in, in a grant, how to best prepare for a grant submission, and what you, can you do to improve your grant success? Because not everyone naturally knows how to write a grant and um, many of us learn this by trial and error essentially um, but there's ways that you can certainly improve your grant success. So what makes a good grant? This is the basics. Well absolutely core to a good grant um, is an idea that's compelling, novel and feasible. So you have to have something that meets all three. You have to excite your reader. You have to be absolutely sure it's novel, which means a really thorough review of the literature because what you never want to happen is that your reviewer finds something that you didn't know about and that can absolutely kill a grant in a second. So you have to know the literature inside out, back to front, and know that what you're proposing is novel. And if it has been done before, why are you doing it again? And feasibility. Feasibility is something that, um, that um, must be demonstrated in order to even think about getting funding. Track record of the team or investigator is also important, but that can vary depending on what sort of grant that you're applying for. A grant specifically targeted to young investigators, of course, um, the track record is less important. But in a, in, a, in, a, in a grant that's an open call, you're going to be competing against the very best. So if your track record is not good enough, you need to make sure you've got the right team around you. You've got to be really honest with yourself about the potential pitfalls and strategies to overcome them. Because when a reviewer is reading your grant, they're thinking, how is this grant going to fall over? or what holes can I pick in the grant? So you have to be honest with yourself. You, and you never, never assume that you're going to have a sloppy or, or not very smart reviewer. Always, always assume you're going to have the best and smartest reviewer and they will find the holes. So you need to find them first. And one thing that often gets any time you study anything you have to have a statistical and analysis plan. It's absolutely, if you, even if it's a short grant, don't cut that out because that actually goes towards feasibility um, and you absolutely always have to have it. So these are the basics. You know, every single grant has to tick off all of these. What makes a good grant is also is style as well as substance. And um, I'm a strong believer that this is really, really important. You have to have meticulous attention to detail and presentation. I say, I call this beyond perfect. Um, you've got one shot to impress your reviewers and reviewers can get really put off by spelling mistakes or minor um, minor misalignments of fonts, and you just don't know how pedantic your reviewer is. So think about your reviewer as the most pedantic person you can imagine because this is something you have control over. You might not have control over the best idea in the world or the best preliminary data in the world. You're kind of stuck with that once you've decided to go ahead and grant, but this you can control. So make sure you put every effort in to make the appearance of the grant beyond perfect. Make it really easy to read. And I always imagine my reviewer reading it at 11 p.m. and desperate to go to bed. So you've got to capture their attention. I really like, this is just what I use very commonly, is fitting the whole grant into a figure. So for the lazy reviewer, always think of the lazy, tired, grumpy, pedantic, unbearable reviewer because you may get that person. So always have them in. Don't think of the kind, nice person. Think of the lazy, lazy, pedantic person. And um, that, that 
I do this often. This is from one of my old grants, um, written actually with uh, a, a colleague of mine in Kasha, Megan Crane. But she basically, Megan put together this wonderful figure that um, basically showed the three main aims of the grant in a very logical way. So any lazy reviewer could, could think, oh, God, what's she talking about again, can go back to the figure and, and quickly work it out. And, um, you know, there are a few tips to help readability. Um, don't use too many acronyms. Use them sparingly. I know it saves you space, but they are difficult for someone that's not an expert. Use a lot of figures, both data and conceptual. I call this a conceptual figure. Um, make sure you've got space. Don't crowd in. If you're running out of word um, space, then just chop, chop your words. Don't chop the space. Um, make the grant very, very logical and try and use colour and font um, to your advantage. And this is just from another grant, it's actually very old grants from 10 years ago, but I'm just showing it to you to see the layout. So you see that there's nice spacing between paragraphs there's bolding of the keywords so the lazy reviewer can just scan it and get a sense of what we're going to do. I and mean, it clearly states the hypothesis and then the three aims, the structure that you'll be always familiar with. How best to prepare and preparation is absolutely everything. Give yourself plenty of time. Start thinking about a grant six months ahead of the submission and never try and rush it, get, you know, polishing it off the night before. Leave plenty of time. Um, always test your idea with other people. Um, just your hypothesis and objectives, just basically the front page of the grant. Test it with people you trust, who know the area, and, and test just that one page before you start writing. It's much harder to redo a 10-page grant um, than to redo the one page. So get that one page, the front page, the hypothesis and aims right first. Um, it's really handy to have um, relevant preliminary data. You don't always need it, but in my granting world and, and different grant bodies um, function differently, but in the Australian system, you know, very solid preliminary data is almost um, absolute requirement for a grant. Getting the grant reviewed externally has been very beneficial in my own career. So I will write a grant um, at, ahead of time, usually keeping about three weeks before the submission date, sometimes four, that's my deadline, and then send it out to people that you know are either grant reviewers who are smart um, investigators and preferably outside your field. I usually send my grants to people that don't work in my own area of HIV because, I, it, again, in, my, in, my, um, in our funding model, I can have a non-HIV person reviewing my grant in our system. So I want to be sure that a hepatitis researcher or a bacteriologist can understand my grant. And uh, when people do give you criticisms, really take them on board and make sure you respond to every criticism. I, someone's taken the effort to provide the review, um, I'd systematically go through every single thing that they um, tell me to do and respond to it. So what can you do to improve your success? You know, grant success is extremely difficult in many parts of the world. In Australia, grant success from our body is um, less than 10%. So, um, you know, you've got to be pretty, resilient um, in research and that's just um, the way of the land and uh, don't get put off um, if you don't initially have success. Some things that have helped me um, is reading successful grants. So as soon as you have a grant, um, if the grant um, uh, model has been done before, then make sure you identify people that have had successful grants and read them and try and dissect what makes them successful. Reviewing other grants is also very, very helpful. I still do them. I'm really quite busy at the moment, but I still review other grants because it gives you insights into the way other people do things and um, it hones your skills in what reviewers are going to be looking for in your own grant. I found um, sitting on a grant panel incredibly useful. Um, and uh, if you get the opportunity to do it, grab it. It's a lot of work but you then get to see how other people see grants different to you and you begin to learn what confuses people and what engages people. And that's what you need to be very mindful of. Um, 
build your if you're going to build building a team will enhance your success um uh if you you no one can do all aspects of research you've got to have the right skill set not only does that make uh, research enjoyable but it will ha- enhance your success selecting the right people um unfortunately grant success is directly linked to track record many people reviewers look at feasibility and think have they done it before can I trust them that they'll deliver next time? And that might be in the form of, pat, of, of patents or commercialization or changes in clinical practice. But people that don't know, you will always look at what you've published before. So you'd be kidding yourself going into some, a grant if you've never published in the area unless the grant requirements specifically ask for that. And finally, um, don't give up. Grant writing is difficult. Many, many um, agencies have low success rates. And so you just, that's just part of the business. You get better and better each time you write. And all I always think if I write a grant and I miss out and I've got a mature idea that I can make better and better and even use it for other granting agencies. So I never really think it's a waste of time. And if you find that you're trying and trying and trying and still missing out, um, get your, you know, show your grants to other people and it may feel intimidating to get that input, but it really does help. And I might stop there. Um, thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the workshop. Thank you.